Welcome to episode 14 of Auction Watch, the show where we deep dive into properties coming up for sale at forthcoming auctions. I'm joined today by Jay Howard, uh, Omer and Mehmet, and we're going to look at three auction lots. Uh, today we're going to go and look at a title split opportunity in Ashford, Kent, but we're considering a short lease opportunity at a property in Harlesden. And there's a phone box, a red London phone box up for sale in Islington. We'll see what the opportunities are there. If you've missed any of our previous episodes, we'll leave a, um, a playlist in the description. You can binge watch some of the previous episodes. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell icon for videos each and every week. And also like and comment and tell us what you think about what we are talking about today. So on to lot number one. Uh, this is, no, lot number one, deal number one. What am I saying? Omer, this is one of your selections, isn't yes, it? A title split right. opportunity. What's all this about? So this is lot 50 at the Clive Empson auction, and it is um, an end of terraced residential three bedroom house. Um, it needs some renovation. Um, the, the title says uh, three bedroom house garage for improvement and completion. So a bit of work needed to finish it off, I guess. Um, Ashford, fairly low value area in Kent. It's guided at 220 to 225,000. Um, and the opportunity here, which I think might be missed, depending on um, you know, who's, who's looking at this, but the opportunity really is that the sum of the parts is likely to be worth more than the sum of the whole in this particular opportunity. So if you have a look, um, as a residential house, it will be very popular for someone to want to live in this as an owner-occupier. Um, why wouldn't you tart it up a little bit, you know, put a new kitchen, bathroom, rent it out if you're a buy-to-let investor. But I think there'll be a lot of interest. What no one will be interested in is a garage that's not fit for purpose, that you can no longer fit a car in. And these garages back back uh, way back when we were built to have little minis rather than the uh, big SUVs that everyone's driving around in at the moment. So this really has no... Well, they have a big SUV. Well, they might do, Ranjan. But, 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 but re being realistic, this you start to see lots of little garages that have been title split and they've been sold off at different auctions. And I think this has no value in terms of the existing house because no one's going to park their car there. It's better for storage. And so someone locally who needs to store some stuff, perhaps a carpenter or someone who wants to put some, some materials and things like that in there, they may look to acquire a little garage like this um, and may well pay upwards of £5,000 for it in an auction. So the first opportunity here is to actually separate this from the title deeds and sell it again on the open market or via auction. Um, and I don't think they'll have any detrimental value to the house. Uh, at the moment, there doesn't seem to be any drop curbs here for parking, but none of the other properties seem to have that anyway. Um, you've got a piece of land to the side, there's potential for parking to go there. But the real second opportunity, which is where, again, the, the sum of the parts is more probably than the sum of the whole, is looking at the um, title plan that's been put together here. You've got um, a corner plot effectively, and there is a piece of land to the side of the house. Um, now. This piece of land has a perceived value. It may be that the existing house could be extended onto that piece of land, single or double storey extension, or it may be that someone could try to squeeze on another residential dwelling subject to planning permission. And so what you'll, what you'll see is a lot of uh, properties like this in the auction, they tend to attract some hope value for someone being able to build in this section of land here. So that's what attracted it to me. And the other thing that I noticed as well is that it's guided not particularly aggressively. So I, I think the, the sort of properties in that area are done up. They're probably worth 275. It's got a video. Play the video. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm fascinated by the um, title split opportunity because I, I get what you're saying. But you mentioned this is um, uh, about five grand for the garage. Mm. Um, up, could, up, upwards of five grand. So, you, Jay, what do you think? You could go maybe six, seven in some locations. Sometimes they go for ten in Kent. Would it be worth the legal cost and all of this? And but you would, if you, if you, if this, 
if this went back in the auction, you, you know, you'd be looking to recover those costs via the sale as well okay. in an ideal world. So. I'll tell you what, what I would be minded to do with that garage mm. is it looks like there's on-street parking and no one seems to have too much of a fuss, but you'd have to go around there and, and, and you know, tread the pavement to figure out where what really is motivating people mm. around there. But what, what I would do is, is if you have basically bought that garage for free, because there's no inherent value in that yeah. guide, guide price, right? So you have a free garage. If you look at all those other garages, if you were to go around to the people who own those garages and said, yeah. give me a garage of five grand. Yeah. Or is there, there's a four, four and three, so seven. So seven times five, that's not too bad. You've got a development plot there. You've, got, you? you've yeah. now got something that you could put mm -hmm. at three or four houses on. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it, actually, if you look at the video, the house is almost self-contained from this piece of land to the side. Yeah. So it, again, it's not really adding huge value. And so, unless someone wants to knock this wall down, build a big old extension, improve the value of this house. But ultimately, another residential dwelling on the side here, which may or may not be granted through um, yeah. a full planning application, it will have some hope value that someone will be able to potentially do that. So I see this as a title split opportunity. And if I was going to go for something like this, it'd be, you know, trying to acquire it, um, create some planning gain, use some nice CGI's, that type of thing, and get it back into an auction. That's, that's... If, you, if you were looking for the easy approach yeah. that you knew that the path of least resistance would be, um, put in the planning application for a side story wraparound extension kind mm -hmm. of thing for the house because that would be the easiest yeah. the thing to yeah. get through, right? And people will attribute a solid value to that. Yeah. Then I would sell off the, the, the garage, like five, you mm. might get 10 grand there, something like that. Yeah. There may be a local builder that wants to store his equipment in there and it's, it's safe and secure, whatever mm -hmm. the story may be. Um, and I think you'll do well. But I think if you were the type that was like, I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna optimize it over eight mm. months, I would be looking at entering into negotiations with the other garage owners mm -hmm. maybe do like a, a you know we all put the land in we split the profit we do yeah. the thing together that may be something or it may and then also doing uh the second house on the side mm -hmm. you know if you were to really kind of work the asset and there mm -hmm. are people out there that go to auction specifically to sweat assets like this oh yeah absolutely yeah. Because the price is, like you say, there or thereabouts. It doesn't need 50 grand. Yeah, worth of but this, this is the thing. The, uh, the, the gui is guided. It's not a, um, guided attractively enough yeah. to create a huge crowd to come and look at this house. Because you can buy one all done up on the road for 275. So you, you've got to go to auction, pay these fees, buy something you need to spend a load of money on. So I don't think it's going to pull in a, a, a big crowd. But ultimately, the missed opportunity is is the land and the garage to, to yeah. increase the value. So, what do you guys think? Would you buy this? I would buy it. I like the strategy. It's mm. probably much more meatier in higher value areas. Yeah. Yeah. This unfortunately, this isn't for me either because it would require some kind of physical work done. <laughs> <laughs> and I've I've, Jay, I've, we, I've we, not got the I've not got the energy yeah. for it as a human being. But so, I tell you, I do like like um, I've echo Ranjan on this yeah. one. The strategy of of looking at an asset like this and thinking, right, here are the elements where we could add things or separate titles, yeah. separate titles off and then create the value yeah. out of that. Yeah. I am 110% involved in that. that yeah. is, that's a bit of me, that is. I would buy this at Guide. Of course per you would. Personally, <laughs> yeah. I would buy this at Guide. I, th I, yeah. think, I think you would probably win it at Guide. Yeah. There may be a chance of getting in it, but I don't think it will go too much about it. Mm. I, I, I think I think they've priced it fairly enough for it to sell either at the two twenty or the two twenty five. Mm. I, I think I think they've they've priced it to sell with a single bidder. Yeah. Um, and you see a lot of those auctions yeah. where it's kind of it's there or thereabouts. Yeah, and yeah. The opportunity enables some to go in and yeah, make correct. their thirty yeah. grand or whatever. It, it'd be one to watch and perhaps try and pick up post auction with with terms that suit uh, the buyer. Yeah. in terms of let's exchange now and give me eight weeks to complete that it, type of thing it's you know? not so, motivating enough to do yeah. a pre-auction no but absolutely yeah, if, not yeah. if you would do the post yeah yeah, yeah. okay so on to uh, our second deal of this episode we are on to Harlesden uh, for a short lease opportunity now short leases can present a huge amount of opportunity Jay talk us through what you found I love short lease <laughs> Some, some, of the, some of the best deals I've done in my life have been um, structuring um, the purchase of a property with a short lease and then by the time I get to the point of 
completing or actually having to put finance down, yeah. the, the, the new lease is in place mm. and the value is uplifted. And then I just sell it on, I, I personally don't tart it up. I sell it on to a, a, a BRRRR kind of investor who will tart it up and rent it out and refinance it and make a bunch of money and do all that kind of stuff. Now this one is extreme. And the reason I point this out is- How it's, short is the lease? It's 14 years. A 14 years left. 14 years left. So this is lot number five at Auction House London. This is 95 Chambers Lane, um, Willesden, NW10. Guide price is £125,000. I, I like, it's a decent size property. It's a decent size asset. Um, I, actually, I actually think it's probably a little bit overpriced. Um, we have a calculator. So most people will understand that when you go to try and extend a lease like this, you probably have to go onto at least leaseadvice.org or something like that. Their leasehold extension calculators only measure leases with 50 years or more. Yeah. So if you want to calculate this lease, you'll probably have to speak to a leasehold or enfranchisement specialist solicitor. Uh, and then just for fun, you'll probably have to speak to a leasehold extension specialist yeah. surveyor. So chances are, before you even get a figure as to how much that lease extension is going to cost, you're a grand in the hole. Mm. If you're going yeah. to do your basic due diligence, you're mm -hmm. grand in the hole. Mm -hmm. We actually have a spreadsheet that we use because we're cheeky that will calculate the extension of any lease um, yeah. from three years and up, I think two years and up. So we have a good idea as to how much this lease extension is going to cost. Mm. Does anyone want to weigh in with what they think that is going to cost? What's the end value of an extended lease? That's a good question. And then I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it actually, that doesn't actually answer the question. It tells know, you yeah. whether it was, if it's worth it at this Absolutely, price. Absolutely, right? yeah. It doesn't tell you what the extension is. And it doesn't is. bake in marriage value and all the rest yeah. of it, right? So what would the flat go like in this area, do you think? Oh, in, in this area, um, you know, uh, a two bed, three, yeah. three, two, five, yeah. comfortably. I mean, it, it's going to need, a, you know, a lick of paint, a new carpet, and yeah. a bit of fanning about. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fairly decent area. Yeah. Um, so that begs the question, what, what will it cost to extend the lease? I yeah. mean, you're going to have to, I mean, you really don't really want to be spending more than 50 on it to... Um, oh, it's more than It will cost a lot more than that. I can tell you that. That's the no. problem. Yeah. But if you're doing three, it, my, that's my point. Yeah. yeah. If it's 300 end value, mm. To flap around with all that hassle and legal fees and uncertainty. Mm. Well, I mean, you, you, if you ask yourself if the lease extension is the same as the guide price, another one hundred and twenty-five thousand yeah. pounds, you're now at two hundred and fifty. Yeah. Mm. Then you've got all of the solicitors, you've got the freeholders' costs as well. So, mm. whenever you're looking at a lease extension, I always bake in an additional ten thousand yeah. pounds. Doesn't matter if the lease extension is only eighty grand. I put ten grand in because you've got to pay for your surveyor, mm. your solicitor, the freehold surveyor, the freeholder solicitor. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, it comes in for less than 10, but you know, you're all factored in. Worst case scenario. Um, my, personal, my personal view is... And there's time, Jay, because it, yeah. yeah. it may take you a year. Yeah. And oh, the, yeah. the money you've got there, whether it's funded or cash, yeah. is just um, well, sitting there doing nothing. A lot of people say these things can't be funded. They can. Mm. It's expensive. That's why most people, they say it can't be funded because actually sometimes the cost of funding it is just... Too ridiculous. Yeah. So let's say you, you buy this at 150, you're holding it cash. The first thing you would do, any normal person, is you would refurb and rent it immediately. That's, that would be your first ever step because you want something returning to you. And then if it takes you six months to two years to do the lease extension, mm. it's, it's, it doesn't matter. But one of the things that I think people may do is there was a news article that came out, I think yesterday or today, where there is the leasehold um, pressure group Mm. Um, writing letters to Michael Gove saying, sort your life out. The, we've had all of the white papers, everyone knows all these things. Change the leasehold story here in, in, in England. Because mm. obviously Scotland operates on a very different, different, different level. But um, if, 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 so, if you were to think, I'll hold this risky for the next three to four years, hoping and praying beyond whole hope and praying that they change the leasehold yeah. thing and they do away with X amount of the marriage value, yeah. you may actually find that this becomes a viable situation. And what I will say is this auction, there's about 12 or 15 short lease properties mm. and the majority of them are below 50 years. Yeah. So not a lot of people know this, but 80 years is marriage value. Yeah. You go from 80 to 15, a fair bit changes in the 60s in terms of the cost of yeah, extension. Yeah. But you get to 50 years or 49 years and 11 months and that cost goes up again. Yeah. 
you get to 21 years and there's a big gap between those two, the cost then escalates again. Mm -hmm. Then at 14 years, then at seven years, then at two years, and at two years, it's monstrous money. Mm -hmm. um, and most people tend not to do it. They just yeah. own it until they have to hand the keys mm -hmm. back. Or back in the old days, you become a regulated tenant because mm -hmm. you, you basically hand the title back to the freeholder. Yeah. Um, this I think this is going to be interesting, but I think personally, it's maybe for for what I would do and the way I'd structure the deal. It's not cheap enough. I'd want I'd want to be picking this up at about eighty five. Yeah, it's about forty it, grand over the odds. It looks it looks to me like an auction trader. It looks um, the lot number looks attractive. The auction house have placed it well. Um, they've issued a section forty two notice. Um, don't know what the premium is going to be in that there. We'll Just explain to our viewers what an auction for. Well, Jay's much better so at explaining that because he's the lease man. But. The section 42 notice is yeah. served upon the, so in this instance, the terminology is tenant and landlord. As yeah. the leaseholder, you're the tenant, yeah. the freeholder is the landlord. Um, so this is your notice onto your landlord to mm. request an extension of the lease. Yeah. Now, there are two things I would point out when mm. you're looking for um, a short lease property that's being traded. Yeah. If it's being traded, a low there is a section 42 notice. Yes. It already yeah. exists yeah. and the price is already done. And it'll and be a fabricated low premium in there. That's just, you'll never be able to extend your it'll lease It'll be for that ridiculous. Price. And then, yeah. then, it, then it manipulates people's minds in yes. terms of price. Yeah. Now, the thing that makes me think that this isn't a traded property it's is it's the language. Expensive. No, oh, no. Right. Okay. Read the language. Yeah. At the buyer's request, a section 42 will be mm. drafted. A trader would have put that in. And actually, yeah. you're right. A trader would have had a much lower guide than this. Yeah, it, so it's too expensive. It doesn't look like a trader. This, suppose, this yeah. to me, screams of a, um, yeah, of, of an estate sale. Yeah, um, yeah, this, right. this is a deceased estate sale. Yeah. Um, I suppose that the, the biggest issue with flats like this is the unsophisticated property investor or, or um, home buyer. Conquer. The, the plonker, I didn't want to say it, but the plonker that turns up, doesn't read the legal pack exactly. and buys this for way in excess of what it's they should have. It's not even not reading the legal pack. Yeah. It's the plonker that doesn't understand that there is a value difference between yeah. freehold and leasehold. Yeah. yeah. And there's someone that will just go, what does 14 years mean? Yeah, it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. to me, right? And the, I've seen it time and yeah. time again at auction. Someone will just come in. There was yeah. a lady years ago, yeah. uh, property in uh, Wembley, so not far from here, yeah. where she walked in, she had like... Um, Whatever it was, held it up in the air and went a hundred grand over. And we yeah. were sit, I was sweating, thinking yeah. she's not going to complete the contract. She's not going to. She did everything complete. Yeah. But then four days later, she came back and said, "Oh, I can't get a mortgage. I can't do this, that, and the other." I said, "Well, you can." She goes, "I think I paid about eighty thousand pounds over the odds." And I'm like, "Well, maybe you have." Yeah. Um, but you know, there are, it's not even about the legal yeah. pack. It's the fundamentals mm -hmm. of understanding what yeah. a short lease is. Absolutely. You know what? It may be that the guide price has been deliberately done like that to honey trap the plonker. Mm -hmm. Because it's not overly cheap. Psychological. Rand Jens has just taken it to a completely different... <laughs> now he's like, yeah. there's a honey trap involved. On purpose <laughs> to make the buyer forfeit the if deposit. If it's too cheap, then you'd, then you'd yeah. think, you know, yeah. well... Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but if it's priced at this point, you mm. probably... A lot of people would think they're getting a you know, full-blown lease yeah. on a two-bed flat. So what do we think? I think I, 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 on, on something like this, I'm of the opinion that there's going to be three or four nutters fighting it out and it really? could, there is no upper limit when, when that happens. It could go for anything. Mm. But I, I, I think I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pay that price for it mm. just because I have a good idea what the extension cost is going to be. And I know that if, it's, if there's an argument between you and the landlord, it, it can go to appeal, it can go into tribunal, you could mm. be two and a half years in and that is yeah. capital tied up. It's not cheap enough. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will. If there are no plonkers that turn up, then it ain't going to sell. And that may be worthwhile going post auction and saying, mm -hmm. look, 80 and we'll mm -hmm. be talking. I agree. I don't think this will sell. And I think this will, it will go unsold. I'm not sure anyone will even pick it up, up uh, post auction. I think you might see it in the next Auction House London um, catalogue at a reduced guide when they've got some realisation that it's, it's, it's not cheap enough. My experience sadly tells me that um, plonkers are 10 to a penny. Um, and the literate ones will see something like this and go nuts for it. I think, I think it's going to sell far better than it has any right to. So tell us what you think. Are you a plonker? Would you go for this? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Or if you think otherwise, let us know. And if you think we're so plonkers, <laughs> no, If you think we're plonkers, don't comment at all, please. Just smash that like button.
to our final lot of this episode, we have got a phone box in Islington. Now, this is a prime piece of real estate, really, folks. I mean, you've got one of these, uh, I mean, everyone's got phones in their hand, hands now, but the, they're selling these um, phone boxes uh, in all these sort of locations. You actually get that plot of land for 35 grand. And you're limited to what you can do with it. I mean, obviously, you can't convert it to residential unless you can find people who can sleep vertically, so that's <laughs> not going to work. But there are commercial uses that people are putting these to, little florist shops, kiosks, perhaps. Little, um, little, little cafe, cafe, the places, cafe, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. coffee and all of that. that. Um, but you're limited to what you can do with it because you can't really change too much of the external envelope. Um, but, you know, it's got electric connection and all of that. I mean... What do you guys think? I mean, you know, I mean, this, this one is, this is let, it's yeah. let already. Because yeah. when these first started selling at auction, they were all vacant and yeah. people yeah. were picking them up like they were going out of fashion. Yeah. And there was, I mean, I think there was, uh, within the last six months, the property on the adjacent side of the road was in auction, commercial with, with three flats on, on top. But th this this is interesting because um, when you're in London now and you go past them, there are, there was a little book exchange where people yeah. like take a book and put a book yes. and all that kind yes. of stuff, yes. which is, yeah. which is, you know, I mean, before people just used them to spend a penny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good place. Or, to do that. or to advertise their yeah. services in, yeah. in, in the depth of the night or near. near oh, here we go. Look, this is what people are doing with them. Look, yeah. coffee kiosk. Very interesting. I don't know whether they've got the rights to that space immediately outside. Mm. No, but I think you can get licenses because it's. Um, pavement license. Pavement yes, because you've got the commercial property. Yeah. And uh, the rateable value should be business rates exempt if it's the oh, only yes. business. Yeah. 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 Unless, they're, unless they're calculating on volume rather than on square footage. Um, but no, I, I, I think these are really intelligent. I think like the next step for something like this is those little kind of waffle cones or the uh, little creperies because people go nuts for those. Yeah. So 35 grand is the guide price. It's producing um, a little income there. It's tenant, this one is actually tenanted. Um, can you just go to the tenancy schedule? Let's I have a look there. Uh, be further down. What that yeah. is tenancy. Uh, Confirmation right. there. There is. Oh, why oh. would they not put that in there? Hey, this is a brilliant opportunity because the auctioneer here has missed a very Ooh. basic element, which is what are the what is the, what's the details of the tenant? Yeah. Well, that, that should be easy to find out. I'm sure yeah. it'll be in the legal yeah. pack. Yeah. Um, but it's not a bad rent, it's not yeah. a bad yield at that guide price. I don't know. But it's, it's poorly it's, advertised because they're, they're advertising a, a yield and then in the script description it says run your own business. Yeah. So and then the two things don't go together, do they? So like they've, they've taken yeah. A, a, yeah. a template and they've just yeah. tried to moderate. But I mean, strip everything out from this and yeah. say, do I want to own a freehold title in N1 for 35 grand? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you're looking to set up a new business, it's a low barrier to entry to, to get your foot on the ground somewhere, but it's can you functionally make some money out of trading a business? And I think the examples in the video of mobile phone repair, florist, little coffee shop, they, yeah. in terms of the footfall, that, that, you, know, you could see them making some money there, I think. I think it's all down to internal fit out. And if you mm. could get the same people to do the internal fit out that did the one on the TARDIS, you, uh, <laughs> you you might be able to uh, make something of it. Yeah. I I I, I pers my personal view on these is that they are better um, owner and occupied. So yeah. I think if you are a small bespoke coffee maker that grinds the beans between their teeth or whatever it is that they do that makes their coffee special, I think you would buy that and you'd run your own business out of it because then you've got yeah. no rates, you've got no rent, mm. everything is you know barring the cost of your um, product. It, it's it, it's profit and you're in you're literally there could you imagine having a little kind of coffee there and you've got the little uh you've got the little cafe there <laughs> with the little turtles. I undercut them by 50p and bob's <laughs> your uncle there we go but um i, I think it, it's interesting but when these first started coming to the market they were they cheaper were 15, they were cheaper 20, yeah pounds. much cheaper and but they seem to be getting a, a, a good old premium now. I think yeah. it's, it's the high value areas, the high footfall areas. I think people will always find their 
used to be in well, the in the you do find these in areas. like the in the in the, the the lovely kind of little residential squares in central london yeah. and yeah. uh or or mm. like piccadilly the thoroughfare they've got some of those there but i mean you know n1 islington it's, yeah. a, it's a strong area you're a fan of islington big fan of islington i think if you um were to find uh, out a little bit more about the tenancy and it's a you know reasonable covenant i think it will um it will, it will sell, but mm. I'm not sure how much above that guide it mm. will sell for. No. I agree. I think I think I think it's guided. I imagine on something like this, they would guide and reserve on the same figure, mm. um, because of the ten percent rule. I don't think it's going to be thirty-eight fifty. I don't think it's going to be that. I, th mm. I think I think you've got a good chance if you were the only bidder. I think you'd walk away with this. Mm. And it's certainly something to talk about at dinner parties to actually buy a prop freehold property in Islington for under forty thousand pounds and not pay <laughs> stamp duty. That will uh, perk a lot of interest yeah. among your property buddies. So that's it for this episode of Auction Watch. You can binge watch some of the other episodes in this playlist. The, the uh, things in the description below. Thank you, uh, Jay Howard, as usual, and Omar Mehmet for joining us in this episode. Like, subscribe, tell us what you think as well, and see you guys next time.